The mission of Socio-Cyberneering was to build a residential research center, developing and demonstrating new technologies and innovative social concepts within a community setting. On a barren scrap of land in Central Florida, Jacques and a few friends began to build what is now known as the Venus Project, named after the tiny nearby village of Venus, Florida. Occupying some 25 acres, 10 buildings have been constructed. Each utilizes both design, construction, and lifestyle concepts integral to developing a working model of harmony and high productivity, integrating both nature and advanced technology. Jacques' objective of conducting a complete reassessment and redesign of our entire culture remains the central focus of his work. With the Venus Project, he has created an environment conducive to creativity and innovation. When people come here, they're amazed to hear that this was just a flat tomato patch. We've dug out streams and ponds and planted hundreds of palm trees and trees. And we built this land to show what the outskirts of the city would be like. We have many buildings here, but you can't see one building when you're in another. We really wanted to show how high tech and nature could coexist within this environment. Jacques and Roxanne have been living on the property and building the Venus Project since the late 1970s. The entire time has been a constant process of developing and implementing new ideas. Jacques begins with a drawing, then produces a scale model, and then videotapes his models in order to demonstrate his concepts for the future. Designed with a holographic computer and built from prefabricated materials, the home of the future will be far more than just a residence. It will be an element of lifestyle and will facilitate learning, inspiration, and communication. One of the most interesting aspects of tomorrow's civilization will be the fact that if you knew anyone fairly well and went to visit them in a period of time of just a few years, their houses will change because the people living in them change. Their needs and dimension of knowledge grows considerably, and so will the environment that they live in. There's no such thing as a fixed home that a person lives in all their lives. It changes with their values, with their outlook, with their acquired knowledge. You just said one thing about how the buildings were designed according to function. Yes. The curvature and the materials and the... Yes. I compare it to natural physiology. An animal's shape is not designed from the outside in. It evolves from the inside out. Whatever you request, the exterior will express a cover over the shape that you prefer to live in. Some of the buildings that are dome-shaped can be laid like eggs continuously by a machine that carries a dome shape, and in that dome, the exterior and the interior are fabricated at the same time. Not everyone will choose to live in a dome. They will choose to live in whatever architectural shape would meet their needs. The reason why we suggest a dome is it uses the minimum amount of materials and covers the maximum areas and offers maximum strength. So the dome shape uh, is included in all, almost all of nature. Your brain is in a dome. The cranial case is in a dome. So if a person says, yeah, I don't think I'd want to live in a dome, you've been living in a dome most of your life. The interior building will have no source of light. You won't be able to see a lamp or a source of light. All the walls would evenly, would have even illumination. You can also specify the color of the illumination, either the entire inner surface or local areas of different color, if this is your request. 
This would be the simplest type of bathroom. Shower, sink, toilet bowl molded into one system. Actually, there's no hardware on here, but there's a slot and the water comes out as a ribbon and that'll cut the soap off the hand and uh, use about one sixth the amount of water. Now the wastewater from the sink goes down into a pipe around here and fills the water closet and we flush the john with that water. So instead of telling people to save water, build a system in. This is what it's all about if you wish to conserve water. Now the bathrooms may vary from that simple style to slightly more complex, but all one piece. There may be as many as 50 variations on a bathroom. You pick what you want and then it's installed. When you leave the building, the entire building is clean. We also have a slight increase in air pressure in the building, so no dust comes in your house from the outside. If there's any contaminants in the air, it increases the electrostatic charge, which removes contaminants. It would be a smart house, because the house has its own nervous system. This is what I'm saying. In the future, houses will have many sensory devices to detect fire, toxic materials, uh, anything that may threaten the life of a human being. Now, if you walked into the house of the future, you might say, can I use your phone? So what's a phone? You, know, them, uh, no, you just say, I'd like to talk to Sam in Arabia. What part of Arabia? You just announce what you want, and the sound will be focused at some point in the standard, right at your ear. So you can hear Sam in Arabia. In southern Florida, millions of dollars in buildings were destroyed by the big hurricane there. And they put up buildings that looked just about the same. Now, if you don't want hurricane damage, an inverted cone, it's almost impossible for a whirlwind to pick up an inverted cone. So we would have these shelters built in the West Indies or wherever hurricanes occur. And inside would be pull-down bedding, food storage, and emergency water. So this is the kind of form that no vortex or wind can pick up. Try to pick this up with greasy fingers and that's similar to the wind whirling around it. <laughs>